Today is January 27th, and the Yankees are doing kind of nothing, sitting pretty with Cole by their side. So we're going to answer as many Twitter questions as we can from you guys. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Recaps galore for weekly awards. Stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. What is going on, everybody? My name is John Boy, and I'm coming to you from the Bronx. It's in uh, New York City, which is in New York State, which is in the United States of America. And Jake is coming to you from Denver, which is in Colorado, which is also in the United States of America. So Jake and I are both coming to you from the same place, if you really think about it. Jake, how you doing? Strong intro. Doing well, Jim. (laughs) Doing well. Uh, Big day. We've had a lot going on. Uh, On the mics and off the mics. Always excited to talk some Yanks with you, with the people. And uh, yeah, man. I I mean, crazy, crazy weekend in the sports world, obviously. Um, uh, All the Kobe stuff, and that was as bad as it gets. And uh yeah, man. So it's uh we we try to do the things that we do normally and talking yanks is one of them. So if this is uh this is what you use to get away, cool. If not, let's talk yanks like we normally do. Yeah. Kobe stuff is sad, man. And oh someone on, on Instagram was like lighting us up about how we handle it and all that and stuff. Like why didn't you sure. post something? So in case there's any other people, um I, I, whatever. I handle things my own way. I go silent when sad, terrible shit like that. And kind of like when you get reminded how fragile life is, it's terrible. I go silent. I don't like posting about it. I do me. Other people can do them. But we'll say this. Uh, like John Boy, he was like, John Boy Media should have like posted that this happened. Like one, we don't break news. Um, two, like I think it's kind of gross that like last night, like every Bleacher Report, um, dead spin, like everyone just went and photoshopped a, a picture of Kobe with his daughter and then posted it with some empty, like, you will be missed just to like attack the moment. I think it's gross. Don't want to do it, but I saw us catching some heat for not talking about it all. And I'll just say it now, like, expect that. I don't think, like, I handle that my own way. And I think the, like, personal people, like, when, when people come out and they told their stories about Kobe, like Mike Breen on the air and stuff, that shit's touching and awesome. Sure. But those empty just, like, pictures stuff, I don't do it. I don't clamor for it. I actually don't like it. So uh, we were catching some heat from a couple people on Instagram. I just wanted to address yeah. it right away. Yeah, and I, I normally go back to my fallback line is, I mean, everybody does stuff differently and deals with – deals with shit differently and yeah i mean it it is a weird thing because some of them are clearly for likes and stuff and you're like that's a nightmare come on people but you know some people do go to some of those other websites for news and they technically have to put something up there so you might as well make it nice but yeah it's a mess i mean it's it honestly i had some good conversations with some of my buddies today about like This is, I mean, as crazy as almost something could be in the sports world. And so you're going to see a lot of crazy stuff out there. So, um, you know, if you close up, if you get emotional, if you do whatever you want to do, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of okay. But yeah, like we didn't record talking Knicks last night because we we normally do that every Sunday. But and we're obviously going to do some Kobe stuff, but I I didn't want to put it out and be like, hey, listen to this. If you want to hear our thoughts on the Kobe stuff, like, no, it's sad. Um, you know, we'll get some stuff out there, but yeah, it's, it's just a weird mix and there's not really a right way to go about it. Yeah. Yeah. I just hide from it. I'm a little, I don't do it. I don't do well with that crap, but you know what? I'm excited for this episode of talking Yanks. It's been a lull. We kind of talked about this. The Yankees are staying pretty silent. Like they, they, who who was it? Who's the Brillo pad head? I'm blanking on his name. Randy Levine. Randy Levine, said, yeah. No, we're At not doing call. anything else. And uh, they haven't. There were some flurries of rumors today, 
my a Twitter account. Um, if uh, it turns out that it's correct, I'll give them all the credit in the world. But I'm going to wait on that uh, because they did say, you know, that there, there might be a trade happening and it's not Hap. And then people are guessing Andujar. Who who knows? We'll wait until yeah. to see. What, I haven't heard anything besides that tweet. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doubting it. I'm also not believing it. It just exists. Sure. Something happens. We will attack it for sure. Boom. Uh, we, so we took a lot of Twitter questions, which is good because we do the, we do the voicemail episode, and a lot of people said they missed the voicemail episode, and they were ex- they were happy with it because it's some fun shit. Twitter is for the people that are maybe a little too shy to leave a voicemail, and we can do a bunch of them. We got a lot. I'm uh, I'm excited. The other things we had on here, Jake, were they officially announced that Anduhar will be playing some left field, some first base, and some some third base at spring training. And you and I and Hoke actually talked about him playing left field when we were at winter meetings, when we had him on the show. And I think out the three of our opinions were, yeah, he was going to play left field in spring training, but he's not going to play left field for the Yankees. We thought that was kind of them showcasing him to the rest of the league, hoping they put him out there in spring and he plays a good left. And then they can go back around and say, look, he's got multiple positions now. Yeah, I think we're we're pretty good at doing connect the dot math, and well, the connect be, the, be gentle. We're not a math pod. We're not a math pod. We're a, we're a connect the dots pod. And let's look at the dots here. Uh, Brett Gardner has been in left field more or less for the Yankees for a decade because they have one of the largest left fields in baseball. Um, Miguel Andujar in third base. Uh, you know, he could be there, but we saw the Gio Urshela show last year. Don't give me the analytics stuff right now. Um, and yeah, maybe he throws over the top and he's a little better there. First base gets kind of fun, but you and I also envision that throw into the Yankees bullpen and left center field, uh, which I like mentioning cause you forget about, it, and then I mention it and you get a big old smile on that face. Cause it's, it's horrifying. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so yeah, and I a credit to Brian Hoke like Coke um, because we used that information and we were pretty firm on a Miguel Andujar is not going to play left field. Um, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, he you know he doesn't necessarily seem like a guy that was extremely comfortable even under pop ups at third. It's an expansive left field, but when Brian Hoke said he might do it at spring training, and then. I, I forget if he said this on our interview with him or if this was before or after, but he was like, you know, he could be playing left field. That doesn't mean it's for the Yankees. And that's when the light bulb went off where that might make sense. And, you know, mm-hmm. people have been po- people have been posting his sprint speed and things like that. I think it was 77th percentile or something. So, oh, I mean, really? is, there, it is? It, it, is there a chance Miguel Andujar could become, uh, you know, a usable left fielder? I'm not going to fight you on that. Who knows? Hey, um, Disco Neal started like 18 games in right field. And he looked kind of solid out there. Tyro uh, Estrada jumped. Tyro Estrada jumped out to left field. Um, I, I thought a funny one, you know, going in Yankees history was Alfonso Soriano, but he was kind of a crazy athlete. Um, he could get and <laughs> he could get to anywhere. They just had to teach him how to get there and how to catch it. So uh, it'll be interesting. And I think it'll be. One of the more fun stories of spring training, um, A, because he's coming off a pretty tough baseball injury, B, um, so how does he look just at the plate in general and health-wise, and then, you know, he could be moving around the field, which could be useful for the Yankees, um, you know, like, is there absolutely a world where Miguel Andujar could find his way to 130 games? Easily. Um, is there a world where we need something else, and Miguel Andujar is the expendable piece. Absolutely. So uh, it'll be fun to see, but it was cool that the Yankees like fully announced that. Yeah, there have been they've announced a lot of things. They said like perhaps the fifth starter, and and that you know uh, Geo's third is Geo's to lose. Voits at first. They're kind of giving a lot of a lot of away and. Whether you believe it or not, it's fine. Like, you know, there is the old Bubba Crosby was a starting center fielder until they got Johnny Damon. You can always right. bring that up. And and you, who knows? Like, maybe something will happen. But And how many little... years ago is that now? <laughs> like, <laughs> Same guy, though. Yeah. I, 
It, it is, but I mean, we're going on, you know, that's what over. I mean, are we getting closer to two decades than one decade on that? Yeah, I think so. It's like 2005. No, no, 2000. <laughs> no, no. Damon came over in, in 2009 oh. or eight. Did he come before the year? He was on the World check. Series team. I think I think Damon came in 2005 Let's after the World after the Red Sox won the World Series in 04. Honey Damon, my uh my nude buddy. Um he joined the Yankees in 06. So yeah, I mean we're we're starting yeah. to get closer to two decades on that on that Bubba Crosby quote, which is ridiculous. And hey man, you and I have been uh for lack of a better term, balls deep in this. Hey mom. Uh, for the past two, three years, and Cashman has been <laughs> nothing but upfront and honest. Yeah, what a weird guy. Lie to us a little bit. Tease Close us. friend. Yeah, come on, give us something. Good guy. The other thing we wanted to note down and talk about before we go into the Twitter questions was the Verlander joking about mm. the Astros in his inner in his. Uh, he accepted his Cy Young, and he said, "Everyone, as everyone knows, the Astros are technolog- technologically, analytically advanced." And then he paused for laughter, and a lot of the room laughed. You know, Jack Curry tweeted that there was guffaws, and maybe by him there were because he was with Yankees people. But sure. The video of it shows a lot of people laughing, and then Verlander says, "Okay, but to be serious." So he was definitely making a joke of it, which we thought was wildly frustrating. Because you have Freddie Freeman for the Braves, who was very sad and like emotional about the careers it might have ended. And the Yankee aspect is that CeCe was sitting about five feet away and everyone says he looked like he was pissed. And if you've listened to RC, R, R2C2, you know how CeCe feels about this and he's pretty mad. So uh, I would have loved to. I, w- I want to hear. I mean, Ryan Rucco is going to ask CeCe about it on the next R2C2. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, that uh, that that's a must listen podcasting as they call it in the biz, um, and yeah, hopefully we can link up with those those guys at some point. That'd be a ton of fun. But yeah, it was a uh, it, it was just a stark contrast of Freddie Freeman up on stage getting choked up, uh, Justin Verlander gigging away, accepting a Cy Young award, and yeah, it's just kind of this sick thing. We talked about it a little bit on Talking Baseball. If you want, check that out. But um, you know, it's tough for me to know where the Yankee fandom kicks in on this one, but uh, it's starting to feel like the smug Astros aren't punished. <laughs> like they they had their Houston Player Day, and everyone was still, you know, Altuve's talking about watch us this year. We're gonna do it. Nobody apologized. We've gotten apologies out of Keiko. We've gotten apologies out of guys that are no longer in Houston. The guys still on the team are chuckling, saying, watch out this year and collecting awards. And that's the frustrating part of this because we were happy the Astros got a punishment and there's no argument. It was a punishment for cheating. But (laughs) there's been, like, for the Astros players, there's been zero uh, implications, which obviously they got um, some exemption when they were doing this. At the same time, you know, they're supposed to apologize at spring training. We'll see what that looks like. But uh, Justin Verlander, you know, silence for months. And then his first appearance, he, he he goes for it. Hey, good balls on you, dude. A lot of us have seen him on the on the leak or whatever. But, oh. but come on, man. Yeah. And then you had like uh, Kike Hernandez saying things, you know, about how they didn't get punished. <laughs> like uh you know they cheated they won the world series and they didn't get punished so and verlander just joking about it pretty frustrating having a Can't good wait time cc yeah all right let's take a quick break because we need to tell you guys about a very special product keeps, keeps hair loss Jim. keeps keep your hair hair loss prevention jake are you worried about losing your hair I kind of am. It's thin. My hair's very thin, but I think that's always because I use bad hair product. Um, so I've been trying to mess with that a little bit, but I, I don't know. I mean, short, stocky Italian guy, that's kind of baldness is <laughs> seems inevitable in my head. <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was because you rub your hair, head with that fish before episodes. Can I ask you a question, Jim? Shoot me a question. I hope it pertains to keeps. 
Is two out of three good in baseball? That's uh, 666 batting average repeating. It's very good. It's amazing. Because it is good in baseball, Jim, but it's bad with male pattern baldness. Two out of three guys before they're 35, Jim. That's why you got to use keeps, bro. I, I've avoided male pattern baldness. I'm the guy out of the three that doesn't have it, but I have male pattern graying, which yes. maybe keeps as another product coming up. But right now we're talking about hair loss. I give you three Yankees. You give me the one that's not going to go bald. Tanaka, okay. Kane Lee, Kane DJ LeMahieu. Kane Lee's Kane going bald. Lee bald. Uh, and I think I'm going LeMahieu. Okay. Tanaka's All got right. a nice dome. Tanaka's got a nice head of hair. Good for you, Tanaka. Yeah. You don't have to go broke to avoid going bald. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. And the other good part about Keeps, Jake, you don't have to go to a doctor's office. You just go to the doctor online, and you email them and say, Doc, scared of my hair leaving me. Yeah. Please help me out. And they send it to you. It's fantastic. Yeah. So go to... Go to uh, Keeps.com slash Yanks, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Yanks, and find out why they have more five-star reviews than any of their competitors. Nearly 100,000 men trust Keeps. How did they count that number? That's so many men. Good for them. Big number. Big number. So Keeps.com uh, slash Yanks. Go. Get your hair. Just keep your starts hair. Starts at just $10 a month. Get your Keep your hair. Keep your hair. Keep. All right. Well, let's get back to it. All right. You ready to move on to some uh, some Twitter questions? Twitter cues? Twitter cues. Here we go. TD let off the voicemail episode, and I didn't plan on that happening. It was just in the alphabetical order of what I named the voicemail. And TD, I didn't plan on you leading this off, but you did. And the first question, Jake, is, are you open to taking live callers? Now... We did that once before DJ LeMayhu trade. The technology was, or DJ LeMayhu signing, technology wasn't fully there, but I was so excited because I was a WFAN junkie growing up. Sure. And I was very excited to do that. Um, I don't know. We're going to have a, a cool studio here, but I still don't think it's in the works because, like, to do that, you really have to just, like, sit down. People have to know the window's there. I don't know. It'd be a tough. I'd love to do it. No idea how and when and why and how it works. Yeah, I think I think you checked it off. It would it would be pretty cool, but we'd need uh how, uh when and I guess well not necessarily a why, but uh yeah, it it'd be cool at some point. Just yeah. uh when when you guys get a chance, just be like WFAN. Just give them like a little slot. Yeah. How about just that? a little baby slot? Uh, all right, then we got T. We T. Walt says, "Keep hearing Arenado, doesn't make sense. Seems like more Harper Machado BS. We have our own guys to sign, and Geo is a god. What are we doing here? I don't think the Yankees are going to trade for Arenado, but I think we're going to hear about it until it doesn't happen." Yeah, and there's, uh, uh, you know, the people in baseball media I don't think are going to help us out on this one. I think, uh, what was it, O'Dowd, the former GM, came out with an article today that no one, it's a guarantee Nolan Ar Arenado is traded before the trade deadline. Uh, guarantee might be a loose word there. Um, the Rockies just uh, bought out Trevor Story's arbitration. I think that was a move to show Nolan that they want to go for it for the next two years. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're going to hear about it and Yankees, Yankees fans aren't the only ones. Cardinals fans are talking about it. Someone asked us at the, the live event we did with Jack Flaherty, um, you know, Braves people are talking about any, every team, almost every team could use Nolan Arenado. Um, the Yankees will be there cause they're, they're just going to be linked to it. Um, yeah, uh, you can't really believe anything till you see it. And I mean, it would be, uh. It it would just be a crazy weird package, and no, don't don't buy into it until he's in pinstripes. I was gonna say the only team that doesn't need him is the Astros with Bregman, but without being able to know what pitch comes, uh, we'll have to see. Ha ha. 
But um, uh, and no, uh, Houston fans are actually talking about getting Arenado because they trade Correa and move Bregman to short. So literally every team except pretty much the t- the broke teams and the terrible teams are talking about getting Ol- Nolan Arenado. Damn, that's cool. Good for everyone. Let's yeah, get their hopes up. Sandra Grazzi with a great question. Sure. Who do you think is going to be Garrett Cole's best friend on the team? It's an interesting one. Um, Garrett Cole just ran into a lot of money. Um, you got to go down the list of pitchers. Gumby, out. Hap, I don't know what best friends, but maybe they have the most conversations. I can see Hap being the guy he talks to the most. Mm-hmm. Sevi and Tanaka already have each other. Yeah. So he'd really have to, like, you know, he'd really have to third wheel it for a bit. Those guys are tight. Paxton? Maybe pa- oh Paxton seems like an easy Paxton. I think the two the two guys that jumped out were Paxton and Lemayhew, because um, I think Cole's kind of normally a quiet guy unless you you get him talking about pitching a little bit. Uh, the problem with those two, which Jim we we haven't gotten into any of these conversations yet, but these are contract years for Lemayhew and Paxton. Um, so there's a little bit of a flight risk there. Um, but yeah, I think Cole and LeMahieu are two quiet guys. I think Cole might be impressed that LeMahieu can out quiet him. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, from what I know about, uh, the wives, I, I could see some linking up there. So uh, yeah, so if, if they're friends, you think they're like the kind of friends that don't ever talk. They're just like, you know, they, it's so unspoken. They just travel together. I think Cole and Paxton, I have, I have Cole Paxton hap. Am I doing a white starting pitchers thing? Kinda. Yeah, I mean it's it's starting to get borderline offensive. I, I could see okay. that, but uh, yeah, I mean Tanaka will try to bring everyone in. Uh, you know what might be the sleeper here? I mean, maybe it's Matt Blake. Matt Blake. Oh yeah. Well, Gumby's out. He's white starting pitcher, and I have him not being part. Yeah, of Yeah, so he's not, he's not nearly different. intense enough for Cole. No. Or maybe that's like you know Ying to Yang. No, I think Gumby's the guy that's always pointing out something ridiculous on the field. Like Gumby's like. Can you believe how many balls the umpire holds in that pouch? And Cole's like, are you kidding me, dude? Get out of here. I'm pitching. <laughs> I'm yeah, pitching could today. Be. Could be. All right. I, I got I got Hap early, Paxton late. Hap early, Paxton late. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, he's going to gravitate towards Hap because Hap's the veteran. He's going to give him some advice. His family guy, all that stuff. But then he's kind of being like, Hap, you're like the fifth starter. Paxton's the number two. We pitch after each other. They're going to go over like, you know, Paxton's the, if Paxton's pitching before or after Cole, they're going to, you know, go over batters. How'd you face him? How'd you face him? It's going to be a lot of conversation. Paxton, by the end of the year, wins him over, best friend. Feeling good date nights between the Paxtons and the Coles. Okay. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Bubak, not sure who this guy is, says... Yeah. What is the deadline for applications for the position of Jake's assistant sucks? Where can I submit my resume? And he even did a little tilde on the E of resume. So that's awesome. Good job, Bubak. I'm tweeting. Uh, Bubak, this is a classic case, kids, if you're listening You know what that means? Home. That means Bubak had to Google how to spell resume, and then he copied and pasted it from the result. There's no way he did that E on his own. If you knock on that door enough, eventually it'll come down. I mean, Bubak is lining himself to be my internet assistant. Um, we'll see what kind of tasks that leads into. Um, but yeah, I, I need it. I'm a mess. Yeah, yeah. Our schedule is getting insane. Do my shoulders look off right now? Yeah, your left shoulder is like different than your your right shoulder is longer and slouchier, and your left was shorter and more perky. Yikes. You're crooked. I'm crooked. <laughs> Something's wrong. Do we have a chiropractor lined up in the city yet? We we are still looking for We do. I think we we're, do. we're we're still looking to hire that Oh, we have a chiropractor? Yeah, he's usually in the chat. He he offered to come do a house call for me. Um Yeah, need and that. And Katie's Katie's actually dying uh, to see a chiropractor, so I should probably actually get in touch uh John Bucci. I think a good chiropractor and a good stretch, and I could get up to like five ten or so. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Next question. Some hair gel. 
Greg World Peace, your uh, co-host on Talking Knicks. Yeah. What does Jay Hap's season look like? You know I'm going to end up in a hole on this one um, because, I mean, if you do some, again, connecting the dots, uh, Hap had a pretty good September. Uh, the juice ball, I mean, if we're talking about dudes that were affected by that, clearly – uh, Jay Hap would be someone you circle under that category. So we'll A, see if those balls are back, which we've been told they will not, but we'll see. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think it, you know, is Jay Hap getting older? Yes. Did he lose a little bit on the fastball? Yes, but I think it also almost started coming back a little bit. So again, Jay Hap is a fifth starter. It shouldn't be no one's concern coming into the season. Um, if he's bad, also, like, if he is bad and you've been on that train, cool. He got old. He was bad. Throw Monty out there. Get Michael King ready. Throw a uh, – who's the dude that flew up the prospects list? My guy uh, – I'm forgetting his name. but Davy Garcia. No, not the not Davy, because I know how much you hate Davy. Uh, I don't hate Davy Garcia. Don't you quit. Michael King. Davey. I don't hate Davy Garcia. Michael King and the other one who's got a fun name who they kept. Come on, Krisky. come on. No, not Brooks Krisky. He's, I think he's technically, this dude is the top prospect in the Yankees org right now. Um, let's see if I can remember his human name. Luis Heel. No, not Heel. Luis Medina. Not the funky cold Medina. Nick Nelson. Not Nick Nelson. This is almost Ma impressively Ma bad. Miguel Yahur. No, not Yajuri. Albert Abreu. Not Albert Abreu. Clark Dude, Schmidt. Oh, Clark, yeah, he's, not a, Clark, he's not on the 40, man. He's the, uh, I think he's the top Yankees prospect right now. 23 years old, up in double A. Um, hey, that Herman guy is supposed to come back at a certain point. Like, if you're spending time fretting over Jay Happ, just stop. Well, if they do trade Happ, it's for salary relief, and... That's the good thing. They can trade Hap and be like, well, we're going to have Gumby star and um, Domingo comes back halfway through the season. We also like some of our AAA arms, and we if we need to make a trade, we can make a trade. You know, like They, they can easily take that stance, but they can also say, well, we think Hap's the best option as a fifth starter, so we're going to stick with Hap. Both yeah. options. I mean, I sound like an excuse-making person, but like they're going to get kind of in a win-win with Hap, I think. It's a win-win from not a great situation. Could you use that money? Could you use that money in other ways? Yes. But win. did they pay him after he was good for the Yanks? Yes. And is he going to throw more bullets for us? Yes, I think so. Win-win was win not the correct. Win's not the correct term. It's kind of like shrug, shrug. Shrug, shrug. They're in a shrug, shrug with Hap. I think my, my Hap take that people would hate is like there's a... The, the possibility J-Hap is solid is the same possibility J-Hap is bad in my head. I agree with that. Boom. Flip a coin. Not right going to do it. Flip one right now. Don't. I don't know if there's a coin in this apartment. Damn. I don't do change. Whoa. Yeah. Donate that to your bank account and to your savings. Yeah. Keep the change. Dude, I just, uh, no, my big thing is like I hate having extra stuff in my pocket. So if you throw some coins in my pockets, I'm uncomfortable. It's all I'm thinking about. I get home, I take whatever's in my pockets, I put it on where I leave my wallet and stuff, and Katie gets so mad because we have like a coin jar. Sure. I'm supposed to put it in there, and it's like you're just adding things to my list of things to do. Yeah, I'm a big leave it at the register. Even if they have one of those things, cool. If not, I'm just going to sneak it somewhere. Oh. Yeah. It's kind of my way of giving back. That's nice of you. Kyle. You. Kyle NYY, which I think stands for Never Yummy mm -hmm. Yucks, which is weird. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think there will be a player on the Yankees opening day roster that isn't currently playing with the New York Yankees organization? It's a fun question. It's a good question. Do we think someone's going to be on the opening day roster that isn't currently on the team? Let's answer in unison, okay? One, two, three, then we leave a beat, then we answer. Okay. One, two, three. Ma yes. Maybe. Oh, I think yes, man. I mean, we had Talkman, 
last year. Did we have someone? Are you connecting dots right now? I'm a dot connector, yeah. We're connecting dots. That's what yeah. we do. When in school, when I was bored, I would I would put dots all on my paper, and then I would connect them and see what shape the, my dots were. That was how I'd kill time during math class. Yikes. Um, Talkman. So we got that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like it always happens. Um, and I, and I could it could be injury. It could be something. Who knows? It's just there is a chance that this year they're fine. Like you mentioned, it's been all silent on the Western front since we signed Cole. And I mean, when you start talking about the depths of hit of our hitters um, and guys that could potentially start the year in triple a, uh, I mean, yeah. And I, we haven't done a deep dive into the bullpen. I'm, I actually got excited to do our PPPs that are coming up leading, leading us through spring training because um, there's a few dudes that are just wild cards. I mean, Heller, Holder, um, who else could be, could be out there that like could be good? I don't know. So, dude, Neil Walker, when he in 2018, he signed on March 12th. So it's January right now. So we yeah. so the last two years at uh, there was someone on the opening day roster that wasn't on with the Yankees in January. So I think the odds are something's going to happen. Like it might not be exciting, it might not be flashy, but even if they're like, "Hey, we want Andujar to," I, I don't know, we want Andujar to start in AAA because he's rusty, and then we signed this random ass dude to fill a spot for a week. The old uh, Steve Cosma. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Is that another Andujar, one? Is 2017 Dan- Cosma? Andujar starts in AAA. That's uh, I think that's a bad sign. Um, oh, of course. But I'm gonna I'll I'll go no this year. I I just think we're like so much of this where the Yankees are at is built on their young talent that's coming to fruition, and you know we're we're arguing about who's gonna be on the bench, and we're arguing you know there's there's options for the bench and the bullpen. Um, that being said, hey, may, maybe Cashman drops another one on us. Yeah, he probably will like this week just to just to make me look like a casserole. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. What would it take for both of you to get the Glaber haircut? What's the Glaber, What's Glaber got going on? Does he, does, does he just have like a tight fade? Like what all the Yankees have, right? And I think so. I think he has what the, like the Mohawk fade type thing. Yeah. That's what all the Yankees have. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get that. I mean, yeah, his, I, there's some of Glaber's pictures where it's not even like ridiculous. It's just like a high fade. Um, I think it's a pretty normal haircut. Judge has the same. Haircut. I'll get dice. Should I get that? You should get the Yankees haircut for sure. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. I don't think you'd look great in it, but I think you should get it. I can't. I can't do the void high and tight comb over. Um, but yeah, I could. I could do the Glaber. Okay. So I mean, it took cool. nothing. Um, it's huge. Nothing is the answer. This question yeah. was the answer. Yeah. You did it, Kyle Roberts. Congratulations. Jake's getting the Glaber haircut. Huge. Well, we actually have something lined up where we can do that. Spoiler. Teaser, Teaser yeah. Nick Mason, 1029. Will the Yankees extend DJ and for how much? I mean, that's kind of up to DJ's camp, right? I mean... I think you definitely open the conversation up during the season. Maybe even now, once the Yankees are done with everything else, maybe you open that up and say, hey, uh, what would it take? What are you guys looking for? Is it an option? And DJ uh, might say, no, we want to do free agency because this is the best I've ever played. And we want to go out there and see what I can do. KP Watershed in the chat says he has an option left. Uh, A club option? Do Do you have that? I didn't think he has an option. It's not listed on the website I'm looking at. I, I remember it just being the two for 24. Um, uh, unless there's something we missed. DJ LeMayhew option. I thought it, I didn't um, think there was an option either. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've, I've got it two for 24 here. Um, 
So, hey, maybe we're wrong on that. For me, we've I think we've stumbled over this a few times. And for me, it's just, uh, oh, you the know. The chat's not talking about what we're talking about. They're talking about Clint Frazier, not DJ LeMahieu. See, that's, uh, I always get worried about the chat. Um, I, honestly, I just think this season has to play out. I know DJ LeMahieu won our hearts last year. Gold, uh, what was he? Silver Slugger. Um fourth in the MVP voting all-star. Uh, LeMayu has a career OPS of 70, 776. He had an 893 OPS last year. Um, it, it was, you know, his second highest ever. He played great defense. He clean, he cleared his most home runs in a season by 11. So if you're DJ LeMayu's agent, which we still like to live in this world where it's like, DJ, we love you. You loved us. Let's just re-up it and run it back. DJ LeMay, who has an agent for a reason, that if he tried to, if the Yankees wanted to extend him right now, they'd say like, yeah, you know, DJ LeMay, who's a five-war player, give us, you know, 20 mil for the next four years, something like that. Um, and hey, if DJ LeMay, who does it again, <laughs> he'll get that money. Um, but I, I think for both sides, it's there's not really a middle ground right now. You know, you almost just broke out into the Barney theme song. I don't peg you as being a Barney kid growing up, but dangerously close to singing the Barney theme song when talking about DJ LeMahieu and New York Yankees. The I love you, you love me? Yeah. I love you, you love me. We're a happy family with a great big kiss from me to you. You're my favorite. P.U. Wow. I forget. John Boy the Barney kid. Oh, dude, there's an episode of Barney that this girl... Uh, got hurt and she's all sad on the swings and it was like my first crush. That was the first time I realized I had crushes on girls. Ooh, that was the first time I realized I had crushes on dinosaurs. Okay, Ross. That's never friends. Had a crush on the dinosaurs. A couple of Ross friends references today. <laughs> I think the Yankees will definitely be in touch about extending DJ. If DJ's going off again, it would have to be a really good offer. He'd have to really like being a Yankee. Otherwise, why would he be? Why would he take it? You know? Yeah. Okay. Apart from the Cole signing, what was the Yankees' best move or non-move this season? This comes from Mark Gorman. The Heavy. I mean, it's it's the catching coach, the training staff, or the new pitching coach. <laughs> like those are yeah. the next. I don't know which one. I'll, t I'll tell you. I'll come back to you in a year. Uh, you know, if Gary is dropping down to one knee and now he's like, you know, mashing and playing good defense and blocking balls, that's great. If Gary, uh, if uh, the Matt Blake has, like, you know, some of these project guys like Lasagna, uh, Sessa, like arm talent but can't put it together, looking like crazy. Sure. If no one gets hurt or we get limited injuries, maybe that. But that still kind of can be just happenstance. But I think one of those three moves is the next best move after Cole. I don't know which one. It's a good answers. I'll uh, I'll cop out behind the only other move, re-signing Guardy. Uh, we keep some leadership in the clubhouse. I think I'm a lot more comfortable knowing that Brett Gardner and Mike Talkman can play center field instead of just banking on Mike Talkman. Uh, so yeah. Okay. All right. Ben Yankees says, now that you guys are so close to the stadium, will John Boy go to more games or still hunker down at the desk? Will Talk and Jake be a stadium rat? Always a rat. I, I'm going to go to, I only went to three games last year, so I'm definitely yeah. going to go to more than three. Uh, that's easy. Uh, cause sure. now if something huge happens, it's a five minute walk to the office. Uh, if I need to like go make a breakdown because someone got ejected last year, that happened. Uh, it's five minute right. walk. Um, yeah, we have more games. I think I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to be a stadium rat, but maybe you will, Jake. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Ooh, I just gave myself the Glaber haircut a little bit, just running th the grease through my hair. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll we'll see what's going on. Um, again, that was uh you know one one of the bigger misconceptions last year was that. Uh, the working during the games part. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll see. I, I think we're going to have a couple more events. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, I, I'm sure we'll end up getting over there, but we have no idea what that looks like. Shout What'd out to Donnie Sweets. Miscon misconception that like we work during the games. 
like people saying, John Boy, come to the game with me, and you're behind three computer screens in New Jersey. Like, no, that's not how this works. Yeah. I love when people say, I'd love to watch a game with you. Like, I don't think so. Yeah. Pretty quiet. Probably not. Tweeting a lot, making a lot of gifts, working very hard. <laughs> yeah, diligent. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about umpires wearing mics next season from Sam71? They just announced this, Jake, that uh, the umpires are going to wear mics. People like kind of went crazy, like they thought everything was going to be mic'd up. They're going to wear sure. mics like the NFL does. Yeah. And if they ever need to explain a situation on replay, they're going to explain it to the crowd. I'm very happy about this. It's awesome. Yeah. Like there's a lot of times it's confusing. Like I don't think they're going to explain ejections. It's when they go to replay, they're going to come back and instead of just saying safe or out, they'll say after review, the runner was out and they'll tell the whole stadium. But there are some tricky situations like the baseline ones um, and some other, I don't can't even think of them, but you know they come up and they'll just explain it to the crowd because everyone in the audience texts people that are home and like, hey, what's going on? I'm at the stadium. I don't know. So it's good. It, it's good. It's good. Um, the, it should have happened probably two decades ago. Uh, we are going to have a couple chaotic moments. Um because baseball is a very complicated game, and these in the NFL, uh, I mean, if if you're a person that watches the NFL pretty regularly, you can give most of the referee signs and what they're going to say. False start on the offense, number seventy-five, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. <laughs> like that's that's it. For a lot of these MLB things, they're going to be explaining. I don't think they're going to have like a talking sheet. And I think that's going to get some guys in trouble because <laughs> talking to a crowd of 50,000 plus people and you've got to explain some in-depth baseball rules, that's a, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to see what comes of that. Yeah. I mean, imagine like remember last year with the Rays and the Red Sox when they had the lineup thing and it took like 20 minutes and having to explain it. Like you guys don't even know what the fuck you were doing. There's that. I mean, yeah, there was what the was it the throw in the World Series was the baseline play that you were referencing? I mean, yep. Yeah. That's a that's a scary formula. And then, you know, if if the ref at the ref, if the umpire says, you know, one or two words wrong from the rule book, people are going to jump all over him for that. So it's a uh, the internet's going to be pretty brutal on umpires for the next for this next couple years and that's no different than normal. All right, from Dustin Pierre, who gets the most at bats playing left? Stanton, Gardner, Talkman, or Miggy? Ooh, this is tricky, huh? I'm going Stanton. So is Stanton, Gardner, or Miggy, or is Talkman in there too? Talkman's in there as well. God, four options, huh? Well, Miggy's um, not an option. Give me God damn it. I want to say Brett Gardner. Okay, say it then. Say it with your chest, son. Give me Brett Gardner. My, okay. Talk talk daddy figures it out in center. Let the young guy play out there. All right. I got Stanton. Okay. I got Gardner crushing it in center field and Hicks not coming back exactly when he's ready. So I got Gardner playing three, two-thirds of the season in center with Talkman spelling him every now and then and Stanton playing a lot in left. Right. I, I just I have this kind of mental hurdle where it's like, hey, Talkman's defensive analytics were off the roof and he's the younger guy. Like, Let him roam center and let Gardy be the gold glove left fielder but I also see Gardy <laughs> saying, no, 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 I'm playing center. So that's yeah. uh, that's tough. Tough fight in my brain movies. Whoa. From Dinkelberg, Josh Hansen. Do you think Hap will be on the Yankees' opening day roster, or do you think he'll be traded before the season? Kind of already did a lot on Hap, so I'm just yeah. going to go really quickly. Yes, I think he'll be on the opening day roster. Yeah, why not? Okay. The Todd Father. Who will be the Yankees' Who will be the first Yankees player during the season that Talk and Jake will write a song about? Mm. I wish I knew. Uh, the The songs come and go. I, I know. I forgot. I had a Sean Paul one. Um, 
Oh, the home oh, run you stroka. Know. Yeah, the home run stroka. Higgy, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your swing just hypnotizes me. Uh, okay, so there's one. Well, uh, we'll happened. see. Not just it's, happened. Well, the season hasn't started yet. Oh, okay, yes. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. It, it's a weird it's a weird mix of having a song stuck in my head, having a player's name that fits, and Rain Man. Speaking of uh, you and singing, the next question is from Bill Malcolm. He says, does Jake have his own little burn studio? Mm. Is there a room where only Jake can go to write burns, like Charlie's bad room on Always Sunny? Well, you can go to the bathroom always and do it. Yeah. We can get you a shower curtain so you can close it up and just hang out in there. Maybe turn the water on, really get your mind right. Or you mm. can just do it in the main studio. Yeah, no, I mean, I've I've had to do it in different locations before. Um you know, and you just uh, you just need a moment of brilliance, and I'm still looking for my first one. This is from uh, Costa Pasta 27, uh, Twitter mm. name Pasta, baked ziti or lasagna. So they're staying very on brand. Yeah. And it's an easy lasagna for me. Love both. Not yeah. trying to knock baked ziti, but good lasagna is better than a good baked ziti. I am H-O. I mean, a lasagna has it all. It's it's the pasta, it's the meat, it's the sauce, it's the cheese. Um, I mean, when it's done right, there's just no beating it. Okay, good, good. And all that Chaz. Speaking of Chaz, I went to Chaz Palminteri's restaurant in New York. Yeah. I met Chaz Palminteri. My dad said, this is the guy who made the video about the Astros. And he said, oh, good job, good job. I fucking hate the Astros. I took a picture with him that I can't post because in one it's very blurry and I look awful, and the other Chaz looks like if like if I post it, it's kind of mean to him. Like he looks pretty bad. He wasn't ready to smile. Post the one where you look awful. And that's very blurry, and I look like a box truck, so I don't want to. It's perfect. That's <laughs> my ideal picture of you. <laughs> um. Oh, dude! All that Chaz asks the easiest question. Mm. Would you rather fight one judge-sized Altuve or 100 Altuve-sized judges? I don't need just would you rather fight judge or 100 Altuves? I don't know, you don't need to change yeah. people. One judge or 100 Altuves? Um I'd rather lose a fight to one Aaron Judge yeah. than win a fight versus 100 Altuves. <laughs> Fucking punch me once and get it over with. Yeah, possum, possum hard. Uh, yeah, I mean, and we're kind of Altuve size, so it'd be like fighting a hundred of ourselves. So that's that actually really suck. It'd suck. Yeah. It's yeah. Fun. Give me one target. Easiest question we've been asked. All right, Shane Michael Walker says, "You guys met a lot of important people at winter meetings. Uh, who were you most looking forward to meeting? Did anyone surprise you, or were di- or were they different in person than you imagined?" How did it feel to be credited and congratulated for your work by people like Cashman and others? A lot of questions about winter meetings from Shane. A lot of questions. Holy smokes. I was excited to meet the Cespedes uh, family barbecue dudes. Yeah. Jake and Jordan. Great. We had a talk to them before. Um, some. I'm weird... texting with Jake. Did you give him my information? Yes. He asked me for your information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was Marley, really Marley funny, Rivera. really funny bro exchange. Yeah, Jake on Jake combo. He, yeah, he was just like, "Hey man, it's it's Jake from Cespedes Family Barbecue." I was like, "Oh, nice man. How you doing? Good, you?" Blah, blah. But it was just kind of funny because we'd never talked before, so I didn't know if there was an end game where he was going to be like, "Hey, yeah, we got got to get the four of us together sometime." Like, no, it's just <laughs> just a "Hey, how are you?" So then I <laughs> I actually texted him today, and I was like, "So are we just going to text intermittently now?" And he's like. He's like, yeah, I guess so. So then we had a nice conversation. That's awesome. Good for you guys. The yeah, Jakes hanging out. The Jakes. Uh, they were cool. Marley Rivera, you guys just heard that. All the yeah. Yes Network people we had already met. Um, I think uh, Passon surprised us. He's awesome. You don't know yeah. if like, the big guys, are they going to be standoffish? Do they dislike that we're not real and they're real? And uh, no, he was very, very friendly. Yeah, Passon's Passon's a dude. He started pretty happy with us. He ended less than happy. Um, 
because his camera accidentally saw me walking behind him. Um, talk to your cameraman, Jeff. But uh, no, he was he was really friendly and nice. Yeah. Um, Youngest looking 40 year old you've ever seen. You'll beat him one day. No, dude. He looks like he looks my age, if not younger, and he's 40. Uh, did anyone surprise you? How did it feel to be credited, congratulated by Cashman? Cashman's awesome. Cashman gave Jake and I a hug, three way hug. Yeah. And he initiated. Pretty nice. it. That was pretty nice. Um, a pretty nice moment. He's like, ah, oh, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> Do we? I know we took some pictures, but I mean, was there a moment where it's you, me, Boone, and Cashman in the lobby? Just no, it was me, you, and Cashman. Then we walked twenty feet, and then Boone came over. Okay, so Boone was a but I, never the yeah. Form. In my eyes, because I I have an image of it of you, me, and Cashman, but I know Boone was around. I don't know, and just in hindsight, that's pretty odd. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, we did it. <laughs> That's Get what it was. We're all celebrating. Cold. Yeah. Um, okay. John Boy and Jake are captains of a flip cup team and have to choose four current Yankees to each fill out their teams. Who you got from Drew? Do you just smell yourself and then get grossed out? Yeah, I smell awful. Um, How long till Jess gets home? Four Yankees. I don't know. She's uh, She went to Orange Theory, which I, I've taken a couple classes. Kind of like it. Kind of good Maybe vibes. she'll come home sweaty as well. Uh, yeah, I, it's really, I'm teetering a fine line because I got to put some laundry away before she gets back because that's been out for a while. Um, four Yankees to play flip cup. Yeah. LeMay. Dating, LeMay yeah. LeMay Hugh. Um, yeah. we're captains though. So you just stole him from me. No, we're the two captains and we're choosing former we're team. Uh, LeMay Hugh is an easiest choice. In He's the, the world. number one pick. Whoever's got the number one pick. Yeah. Um, I'm actually taking uh, Chad Green as well. Okay. You're going the all-calm team. No, because I'm also taking Canely. Because you need a okay. rah-rah, like, get your fucking ass in gear. Let's go, Chad. Let's go, Chad. Let's go, Chad. You need one of those. Yeah, see, Canely's a, Canely's a risk, though, because that could turn real quick for someone like Chad who well, doesn't want to be well, there. Well, Canely's also great because if you start losing, he cheats. And then he, like, flips the board over, and then who knows? No, that's not Canely. That's just you. Um, I'm taking Brett Gardner because I need the leadership and his smack talk. And he's Brett Gardner doesn't get off the grill. You're not going to get him away from the grill. No, he's who said this was even at the barbecue, bro. (laughs) This is a separate event. I don't care where he is. Gardy's talking the the most shit. Okay. Yeah. He is swimming in the other team's head while also being the leader of our team. Um, so you, you screwed that up. No, that's fine. Um, that's fine. That's a good foursome. DJ, Chad, oh. Canely. And the most yeah. obvious anchor is Gio Urshela, who basically does a trick shot to end it. I think that's Glaber back there being all cute. Like, Gio does a double flip, and he's like, oops. Not whoops. Bad. Okay. Let's, uh, rif- Let's rifle through these next questions. Creamy or crunchy peanut butter? Crunchy. I think I'm going to lean creamy here. I think if you have too much crunchy, you end up eventually being like, I kind of just want some creamy right now. Crunchy is good. I'm Give me 60, 40. I'm Give me 60, crunchy. 40. Extra crunchy. You'll get sick of that. I eat a spoonful a day, like minimum. You get sick of it. No. Creamy peanut butter is like bologna. Eventually you grow up and you stop eating it. No, I mean, crunchy peanut butter is the wrong answer because it's a nice novelty. I eat, I eat a spoonful. Put that of on a peanut. sandwich. You're playing a different. You're playing a like dangerous game. Katie's dad's been here playing landmines. He was like, "Jimmy, you really eat a lot of peanut butter." And I was like, "Like spoonful a day minimum." That's we don't have snacks in the house. That's the only thing I. If I'm like, am I hungry? Oh, okay, spoonful of peanut butter. Right. Um. Does Eric Kratz get a major league plate appearance this year? I'm going yes. I mean, catchers- absolutely. A lot of catchers get at Don't know what team, but absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, Rim, I was about to say that out. It's RIP Mamba, 161 Street Filth. Will Jake spit in my mouth? Saw this. Um, open to it, um, but I need to know that you've had someone else spit in your mouth before, so I need to witness that. So you essentially need to have two, two people do, spit so in your I'll mouth. So I'll be the first? If you want. I don't want to. See? 
Will you be ranking the top five spring training haircuts? I didn't know this was what anything that anyone wanted, but of course. Yeah. Sure. Remind us in spring. <laughs> Keep eyes on it. <laughs> uh, Shay Nolan says, who hits the first home run for the Yankees in the 2020 regular season? My money's on Judge. It's a good one. He gets a, 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 a first at bat. Yeah, I'll do a, you know, hot takes only on this show. I'll go with the Giancarlo guy. Damn. Uh, if you reach a certain number of reviews, say 2,000, on Patreon this season, rev- reviews or patrons? Now you've confused sure. me, Yankees PH. Let's just say you meant reviews. Yeah, yeah don't Pretty deep close dive to that. that. If you reach a certain number of reviews, say 2,000, what will you cut off from your body and put into Jake's? Hmm. In? Yeah, in. Ooh. <laughs> that's a, Pinky that's finger a dang- up your butt? That's a dangerous game. Um, no, we can, uh, we'll, we'll figure out a friendly uh, talking Yanks deal. Well, you know, what I, you know what I want to do. What do you want to do? I want to... If we reach a certain amount of reviews, then you will ride uh, a bike around Yankee Stadium with a uh, GoPro helmet on. Close up of your face. See, I I will do that, but you're going to keep adding circumstances that it's got to be like right before a game or some shit. Like, because I'll do it in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, fine. It's got to be during a game. Like it's got to be. You have to understand that's not too enticing to the people, though. I'll get them something juicy. I think it's enticing. If it was like busy traffic time, Pre-game. no what? Pre-game. Pre-game. I. That's what I. I. I just said that's what I don't want to do. So we'll that, figure out something. We'll figure out something extreme that I can wager that, and you figure out what. Or maybe I'll figure out what you want to wager or something. Because, yeah, if I have to ride around Yankee Stadium pregame on a bicycle, that's uh, close to my nightmare. <laughs> people be cheering for you, dude. We can line the streets with people cheering. I just don't get it. Bikes? I mean, I get that, but. Okay. So many people. Yeah. Tough. Uh, next and last question: What would you want to add to the area around Yankee Stadium to improve the game day experience? Jake on a bike. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Nothing. I, I Yankees don't need frills. Get inside the stadium. I don't really like people do the bars before games. I like watching batting practice. Like I, only, I like getting yeah. inside as early as possible and enjoying like the stadium. So outside of the stadium, I think that's. You know, it's for drinkers and casual fans. No, that's too rude. You can you can be a good fan and want to hang out outside the stadium. A I'm little not bit. saying you're a bad fan, but it's mo- I think like you said, like, drinkers and casuals. That shots well, fired, bro. <laughs> well, it's all because it's for outside the Yankee Stadium. It's all bars, right? But you can want to hang out and enjoy the atmosphere outside the stadium before you go into the game. I mean, a yeah. lot of times you can't even see Yankees batting practice, so you never can. You can see like yeah, the exactly, last, last <laughs> exactly. I know. I didn't mean. To, I didn't mean to downplay anyone. The shot does fired. That. It was a rude. It was a rude. Comment. I was thinking. I was thinking of when I was in Cleveland, and they have tons of bars around their stadium, but people just stay at the bars and they're late to the game. Right, and I, but you can enjoy the environment outside the stadium, have a barley or two if you'd like, and still be a good fan. Would you add anything? I think they got enough. That's good. It's a good setup. I mean, my brain just jumped to nachos, but uh, that's like what my brain does in kind of any situation. So I don't, I don't even know what that means. Just a Good nacho answer. guy. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Just nachos <laughs> <laughs> on every street corner. That's my mayor pitch. Uh, some quirky character from Parks and Rec. It's nachos. Nachos, Jackie. All these people. All these people. I think that's it. I think that's the end of the Twitter episode. Maybe Matt Stucco outside the stadium. Just they greeting more, like they need more milk carton people yelling about Jesus and yeah. sins. Not You're enough looms. Yeah, like getting everyone's face. I like I like, I like our stilts. 
Matt Stucco on stilts, like formally greeting everyone to the stadium. Yeah, no, no gimmick about the stilts. Just like a Tuesday afternoon game for some reason, and Stucco's out there like, "Oh, big game today, guys! This is gonna be great!" Can you believe we're here? The stilts are only like a foot high. Yeah, they're They're not not crazy crazy stilts. No, just so we can get a little above above head level. They're like if you saw someone training in the park wearing them, you'd be like, okay, they're planning something. These are training stilts. These are futuristic stilts, yeah. Yeah, and then just greeting everyone. All right. Guess we'll end it there. Thank you, everyone, who asked the question. We appreciate you. We'll be back next, I don't know, whatever, uh, Thursday night. It'll drop Friday morning unless I fuck up again and drop it early by accident. I'm going to be in Savannah this weekend, and I'm going to be enjoying it. So this was the end of this episode. We thank you kindly. Leave a review if you want. See you later. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.